Hello there, this is John V, Software Evangelist at Jscape. SFTP is easily one of the most widely used file transfer protocols in business processes. Incidentally, Amazon S3 is also steadily becoming a go-to cloud storage solution for businesses. How would you like to access AWS S3 via SFTP? If that looks like something you could use, check out this video. What I have here is an Amazon S3 bucket named Jscape John, and inside that bucket, a folder named Folder1. Let's say I want SFTP file uploads to land in this folder. The SFTP server I'm using for this tutorial is Jscape MFT Server a managed file transfer server that supports SFTP along with several other file transfer protocols like FTP, FTPS, HTTP, HTTPS, AS2, OFTP, and many others. In addition to supporting a wide range of file transfer protocols, Jscape MFT Server also supports several cloud storage and network services. So you can have your users and trading partners upload files via their file transfer protocol of choice and then have Jscape MFT server store those files in the cloud storage or network service that you prefer. I'm now here on my Jscape MFT server instance where I already have an SFTP service up and running. In order to store files uploaded through that SFTP service onto a folder in your Amazon S3 bucket, you need to create a corresponding Amazon S3 network storage object. To do that, go to the network storage module and click the Add button. Expand the protocol drop-down list and select Amazon S3. Click OK to proceed. Once the network storage parameters dialog appears, give this network storage a name, say NS-S3. After that, enter your AWS S3 access key and its corresponding secret key. Next, specify the bucket and folder where you want your uploaded files to be stored. You may test the connection between your Jscape MFT server instance and your AWS S3 bucket by clicking the test server button. Now, if you encounter an error like the one shown below, try checking the region associated with your AWS S3 bucket and see if it matches the region selected in the region dropdown list. Change it if they don't match. Click the test server button again, and if the test succeeds, click OK until you're back at the main screen. You should then see your newly created network storage object. Now that you have an AWS S3 network storage object, the next step is to map it to a virtual path. There are two ways to do this. One is by mapping it to a user's virtual path and the other is by mapping it to a group's virtual path. Let's map it to a user's virtual path for now. Go to the user's module, select the user whose virtual path you want to map with your network storage object, and click Edit. Next, navigate to the Paths tab and click the Add button to add a new virtual path define the virtual path. For example, forward slash S3 storage. This means this virtual path will be located directly under this user account's root virtual path. Next, map this virtual path to the network storage you created earlier by clicking the network storage option button and then selecting the name of the AWS S3 network storage from the drop-down list. Click OK to proceed. We're now ready to give this setup a test run. Let's connect to our SFTP service and see if we can find the AWS S3 virtual path there. 
Let me obtain the IP address of my Jscape empty server instance first. So in my SFTP client, I can enter that IP address into the appropriate field. I'm also going to enter the other pertinent details like the username, password, port number of the SFTP service, and protocol type, which in this case is of course SFTP. As soon as I connect and log in using my file transfer client, I should see the folder S3 storage, which is the name of the virtual path that maps to my AWS S3 bucket folder. So if I upload files to this folder and check the actual S3 bucket folder in my AWS console, I should see the newly uploaded files there. That's it. Now you know how to set up Jscape MFT server so your users can access AWS S3 via SFT.